So today I wanted to share a dream that I had back in 2018 where the Lord took me to hell. One of the scariest dreams I ever had by far. It was super vivid. I shared it briefly on my channel before, but I want to make a video just for this dream and the reality of sin, the reality of hell. It really freaked me out. I mean, I have to say it was the scariest dream I ever had. Well, there, there was two actually, one with the Lord allowing me to see a little child being sex trafficked, which I'll share on my channel one day as well with like a separate video. So this dream was crazy. This was back around the time um, where I really caught fire for the Lord. You know, I was saved in 2016, but I was still one foot in the world, one foot out. I really got radically saved in 2018. And one of the reasons is because of this dream. So in this dream, actually, I give a little background story before I jump into the dream. I was in a conundrum because I had one Christian friend telling me that fornication was not a sin, that the Bible's outdated. And then I had another Christian friend at the time telling me that every word in the Bible is true. And 1 Corinthians 6, 9, no adulterer, no fornicator, no homosexual is going to inherit the kingdom of God. And then so I you know, Romans chapter one as well. And I would always skip that part because my non, my Christian friend who was not on fire for the Lord was completely deceived that the word of God isn't true. I believed her, but in my spirit, I, I was really convicted because I was kind of still back and forth with my ex. And so again, one foot in the world, one foot out of the world. So I just asked God one night, I was actually in D.C. working undercover for Project Veritas, and I, I read the word every single day, but again, skipping over, skipping over that part. And I just asked, I said, Lord, is fornication a sin or not? Which one is it? Because I have one friend telling me one thing, another friend telling me another. Which one is it? And that night, I fell asleep, and it was a, it's a very short dream, but it was very vivid. And let me tell you, I woke up in a full body sweat and I don't sweat. So here's what I saw in the dream. I'm instantly in this dream and I see I'm in pitch darkness and I see these three demons. They have a black robe, covers their whole head, their body all the way down, their arms. Even though in the dream I saw their face, which was a very demonic evil face, and I knew exactly who they were. I knew they were demons. I didn't remember their face when I woke up, but in the dream I did. And I was terrified. I didn't see fire. I didn't see, I didn't feel the heat. I mean, I literally knew I was in hell and it was in pitch darkness. And I, and these three demons were holding this gold bar necklace. And actually the chain of the necklace was even bigger. It was like these massive gold chain for that part that holds the necklace. And on the bars, I knew that each single bar that they were holding represented sin. Now, I didn't know what sin it was. I knew each one was holding a sin in their hand and they were tricking me into putting it on. And so here I was looking at these three demons, terrified, looking at them. And I, I, I realize now too, the Lord was using a necklace because my sister makes jewelry. And one of my favorite necklaces is a bar necklace. I mean, pretty amazing that the Lord will use things that you understand. But actually points to the Bible, which I'll get to in a second. But here I'm looking at them. And the one on the left went first, the one to my left went first, and he put this necklace around my neck. And my neck weighed down. I remember it was so heavy. Guys, one sin is so heavy. It is heavy, right? The yoke of the Lord is light, right? His burden is light. But the yoke of a sin, one sin, is so heavy. So he, the, the, I'm screaming, by the way. I am screaming in this dream. No, 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 no. And he puts it on me. And I knew I was tricked into falling for this sin that this demon had for me. And then my neck, I, I mean, I'm already like in the middle. My, my, my neck is way down. My head is like towards the, my, like around my stomach area. It was kind of like a cartoon character where my body's trying to stand right up, but my my head was weighed down. And then uh, the second demon, I felt it putting sin on my neck as well. That one bar. 
again, my neck way down. Now my cheek is touching the floor. It's literally touching the floor. Again, my body's trying to stay right up, but my neck is already touching the floor and I knew where they were pulling me. I knew where they were pulling me. And I started screaming in the dream before the third one put that sin on me. I started screaming, Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. And I was petrified. Like I said, one of the worst dreams I ever had felt so vivid. I mean, I was there. I mean, I, I, I it was, for me, it wasn't even a dream, even though I know it was a dream. It was like, I was there. It was so vivid. And so I remember screaming that, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell, Jesus. I don't want to go to hell. Forgive me. Forgive me. I woke up. Woke up, like I said, in a full body sweat. I am drenched. I'm telling you, I don't sweat. You know, when you when I really, really run, okay, fine. But I don't. My t-shirt was soaked. My shorts were soaked. And I could not go back to sleep for a long time. I was up for hours. I remember actually, I pulled up my Bible, turned all the lights on, and out loud, I said, Lord, what sin? What sin is this? What sin are they tricking and putting on my neck? Because I don't want to go to hell, Lord. I repent whatever sin this was, Lord. Forgive me, forgive me, Lord. What sin is this? What sin? And I heard it so clear. Fornication. Fornication. Whoa. I was honestly shocked even though I was reading in the Bible and even though I knew in the back of my head, especially when I got saved, I knew every word in the Bible is true. I knew that, but still I was deceived by a Christian friend who told me that the Bible's outdated and I'm not blaming her at all because my conscience was telling me stop even. And, and I did very much. I mean, we weren't, you know, I, I separated from him. It was once in a blue moon I'm seeing, but still, that one sin is evil in the sight of God. And so, wow, I'm being tricked into hell with fornication. I'm done. Remember, I repented. I was crying. And I said, Lord, I am done. So 2018 was when I made the vow. Lord, I'm waiting until marriage. I'm waiting for my husband, you know, whoever he is out there. Um, I'm done. <laughs> and by the grace of God, I've been able to be done. Amen. I couldn't do it on my own strength at all. I want to tell you, it is the grace of God. It is literally the grace of God that I don't even want to. I'm good. I'm set free. Um, the Lord set me free. And at that time as well, the Lord set me free to pornography. I used to watch pornography. God completely set me free on that too. Thank you, Jesus. Because let me tell you, that is an open door. That is an open door to not just the devil, to your mind, to your heart, to your spirit. It's an open door and it's sin. Watch your eye gates. Okay. A lot of men are stuck in pornography. Women as well. A lot of pastors even are stuck in pornography. One thing leads to another. Then you have lust, which is a sin. Okay. Then opens a the door to adultery, to fornication. Let me tell you in this dream, I saw these demons. I saw them. And let me tell you as well, one sin is so heavy. It's so heavy. The yoke of the enemy is heavy. And let, and another thing too, in my own strength, I could not get up. In my own strength, I could not take that necklace of sin off of me. I could not. It was only when I yelled out the name of Jesus. It was only by the blood of Jesus was I set free. Only, only way I woke up and literally laid that down on the altar. I said, Lord, I'm done. I am done. No longer not worth it. Five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour of pleasure is not worth going to hell for. Not worth it at all. So wanted to share that dream with you. And also, if you read in the word, it's all over the word where the Lord talks about your neck. In Psalms, even Jesus, the Lord himself has talked about put a garment of truth around your neck. Well, garment of praise around your head and a necklace of truth on your neck. It says it all over the word. David even talked about it. David in Psalm 38, 4. This blew my mind when I read this. 
I didn't know this verse until after my dream. For my iniquities are gone over my head. Iniquities are sin. As a heavy burden, they weigh too much for me. This is what David said. For my iniquities are gone over my head. As a heavy burden, they weigh too much for me. Whoa, I read that and I thought, that's exactly the dream. That's exactly what I felt in the dream. It was too heavy for me to carry. It went over my head. It was a necklace of sin. Put a necklace of truth around your neck. Put the garment of praise on your head. Proverbs 3.3 3 says, let not mercy and kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Bind truth and mercy around your neck. Bind truth around your neck. That's what Jesus said as well. Psalm 38.6, listen to this. I am bent over and greatly bow down. I go mourning all day long. This is the same Psalm where David is talking about the iniquities and the sin around his neck. This is the same Psalm that I just read where David had a bunch of iniquities weighing his neck down. I am bent over and greatly bow down. I go mourning all day long. I mean, I was mourning in the dream. I was screaming in the dream. I was all the way bent down with my cheek touching the floor, knowing that I'm going to go through this floor into the fire of hell. And I'm in this pit for the rest of eternity. That's what I knew without a shadow of a doubt. I knew it. The Lord warned me. He's so good, by the way, because I asked him. He's good to tell us. He's good to show. He's got so much mercy and compassion. He doesn't want me going to hell. So he, he showed me this. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall be in that day that the burden of Assyria shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. Again, another reference to the yoke of the enemy around our neck. Another passage that really shook me right after this dream. This is when I realized, okay, I am done with this ex-boyfriend. I am done. He's an atheist. You know, God bless him, but I need to be equally yoked. I need to focus on Jesus. I need to focus on the word. I need to focus on righteous and purity and holiness and walking like the Lord. Again, only by his grace. It's not been easy, but when you have the cloak of his grace on you, you can do anything. You could do anything. Praise God. So I got to, the Lord showed me, I should say, um, through a, a pastor a few days later, um, talking about 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 totally blew my mind and changed my life. That was when I really gave my life to the Lord again. I rededicated my life and said, Lord, I'm done. I thought I knew you. I thought I was following you. Uh-uh. I have to die daily, pick up my cross and follow you, Lord. It's again, only by your grace. Second Timothy chapter three, it describes all the different attributes of the latter days and the attributes of the latter day people, which is men will be unholy, unkind, unloving, disobedient to parents, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The NASB version says, avoid such men as these, for they captivate weak women weighed down with sins. When I read that chapter a few days after my dream, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm a weak woman, captivated, and I'm weighed down with sin. Weighed down with sins. So many that I'm being tricked into, but again, also being disobedient to the Lord, right? I mean, your ignorance is not, is not an excuse. When the wicked stand in front of God on judgment day, they're not going to say, well, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't read the Bible. I had no idea it's a sin. Your conscience tells you it's a sin. That's what it says in the book of Romans. Your conscience tells you it is a sin. It is evil. You're not supposed to be doing this. You're not supposed to be having, you know, sex outside of marriage. You're not supposed to be in a same gender relationship. You're not supposed to be sleeping with your neighbor's wife or husband. You're not supposed to be doing that. Your conscience tells you you're not supposed to be doing that. So by the grace of God, again, he lets us know. But when you're so depraved and you're so full of sin, you basically start losing your conscience. You're so full of demons. You're so, you know, deceived. But again, it's still not an excuse because we know that it's evil to hurt children. But in, in the, Roman, the book of Romans, Apostle Paul says, but we repress the truth because we hate the truth. 
And I'm not going to say hated the truth, but I was deceived. So I hated the truth at one point, <laughs> but I love the truth now. That's why it's so important to read the word of God. So that being said, that is my dream that the Lord took me to hell in. And it was, like I said, a very vivid dream, a dream that I never forgot, a dream that changed my life. So that's a warning to you. I don't know. Maybe you know someone who's struggling with this. Send them this video because fornication is a sin. It's a sin. Lying is a sin. Stealing is a sin. You steal a pen. It's a sin. But he's so full of mercy and compassion and grace that he can forgive you. So this is what you do. If you're watching this video right now and you're shaken to the core, you're weighed down with burdens, you're weighed down with the cares of life, you're weighed down with iniquities, it's easy to take it off. You cannot do it yourself, though only by the grace of God. It's only by the blood of Jesus. So just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me that I was tricked into a sinful lifestyle. Lord, I repent with all my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus on my spirit, on my mind, on my soul, on my conscience. Lord, I want to walk with you all the days of my life. Forgive me my sin, Lord. I confess you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again in three days. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the grace to walk strong. Give me the grace to walk in this walk of faith, this great race that we're on. Give me the grace, Lord, only by your grace in Jesus' name. And he will help you. He will guide you every step of the day. As much as you want to be close to Jesus, he wants to be closer to you. But it's it's on you. It's on you. He'll be just as close to you as you want to be close to him, right? Draw near to him. He draws near to you. So share this video with a friend that's been struggling in this department or with any sin by any, you know, honestly, any sin. Because in the dream, it didn't say what sin it was, but I knew it was a sin that the devil was tricking me with. God bless you guys. The Lord is good.